Spurgeon. Mornings. <laughs> One of the things I like about Spurgeon is that it always feels... I've had paperback books, but the only, I think, really hardbound edition that I have of too many books is Spurgeon. <laughs> and somehow that fits being a classic, you know, is that with the old ideas and the old concepts of how he articulated himself when he was teaching pastors how to be pastors. I think that's a positive reinforcement when I grab a hold of the book and it feels like solidity. <laughs> Not like a, a tablet or an e-version or a paperback. But in Spurgeon, in Evotionals, if thou wilt lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Exodus 25. God's altar was to be built of unhewn stones, that no trace of human skill or labor might be seen on it. Human wisdom delights to trim and arrange the doctrines of the cross into a system more artificial and more congenial with the depraved tastes of fallen nature. Instead, however, of improving the gospel, carnal wisdom often pollutes it until it becomes another gospel and not the truth of God at all. All alterations and amendments to the Lord's own word are defilements and pollutions. The proud heart of man is very anxious to have a hand in the justification of the soul before God. Preparations for Christ are dreamed of, humblings and repentings are trusted in, Good works are cried up, natural ability is much vaunted, and by all means the attempt is made to lift up human tools upon the divine altar. It, there, it were well if sinners would remember that, so far from perfecting the Savior's work, their carnal confidences only pollute and dishonor it. The Lord alone must be exalted in the work of atonement. He did it, he accomplished it, it is finished. And not a single mark of man's chisel or hammer will be endured, not one iota of adding to it. There is an inherent blasphemy in seeking to add to what Christ Jesus in his dying moments declared to be finished, or to improve that in which the Lord Jehovah finds perfect satisfaction. Trembling sinner, away with thy tools and fall upon thy knees in humble supplication and admiration and accept the Lord Jesus to be the altar of your atonement and rest in him alone and not any other doctrine or attempt to work. Many professors may take warning from this morning's text as to the doctrines which they believe in. There is among Christians far too much inclination to square and reconcile the truths of revelation. This is a form of irreverence and unbelief. Let us strive against it and receive truth as we find it, as we read it, as it says so, as the scripture states. Rejoicing that the doctrines of the word are unhewn stones and so are all the more fit to build an altar for the Lord. You know, it's interesting that, that Spurgeon would bring to the table the point of not adding to or arranging or changing the word of God as it states because a lot of times people will take one little portion of it and they'll make this huge palatial structure of all kinds of wild ideas and strange perspectives that if you simply read the Bible just the way it is, it doesn't really make sense what people come up with. <laughs> so whenever you hear something or you sense within yourself that something isn't quite right, that just doesn't sound right, check it out in the Bible. See if it's in Scripture. See if it fits what God said. And if it's changed in any little way, ignore it. Ask God about it. See what He would say. Because the reality is, is that what Jesus did was to accomplish everything that needed to be done for our salvation. Because if we act as though we need to do something else to work out our salvation by using that out of context, then what we do is we're saying that the work isn't finished and it isn't accomplished. And in God's eyes, it is. Because as far as he is concerned, what Jesus did 
means that we are already done with trying to be saved or feel saved or look saved or act saved because God knows He is the author and the finisher of our faith, not us. So whenever you're trying to work up faith or do some doctrine or do some adding things to it or to be legalistic or doctrinalistic or try to separate yourself from other people, go back to what Jesus said. Look at what he wrote. Look at what he stated. Look at the very words. And then ask him himself, Jesus, what would you tell me to be and to do? Because I know what men would say. And they've invented religion and separated themselves so many times that we've got thousands of denominations and thousands of churches and thousands of people saying this, that, and the other thing. Which is okay. As long as they have a relationship with God and they're being directed by Him. But when they seek to direct other people, you need to seek the Lord and seek His Word and find out what He would say to you. Because the only way you're going to know whether it's true is if it's in His Word.